Okay. We're back. Yes, back. New location. Look at us. Oh my God. We're in this new museum. Well, we're outdoors. Yes. That's the uh, first. Very different. Yes. This I think is, so. Yeah. We're now shooting on location. That shows how professional exactly. we've become. You see, we're big time now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, what are we talking about? We're going to talk about Mel Gibson. My, All right. My, one of my favorite actors slash actor turned directors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so. And why is it, that? Huh? Oh, because I like the intensity of what he, how he commits himself to work. Um, I like the fact, uh, as a director, I think one of the things that's good, he's one of the good Hollywood directors in the sense that uh, he works within the structures of the medium, mm -hmm. of the uh, industry, and he makes his films very distinctly his own, you know. Um, what I did was I actually went back, did a lot of research just to kind of know what I was talking about, mm -hmm. and I broke his career, as I know it. Into phases? Into, yeah, well, three parts, really, right. is what I said, and I want to, I have to read it because I don't have a memory anymore. Um, the first part was, you know, the young Mel Gibson. Um, Mad Max and the before Australian that even, films. Yeah, the Australian film Gallipoli and Tim. Yeah, and I right. remember seeing those. And okay, what did I say? Well, didn't he do the first Mad Max around that time as yeah, well? well? Yeah. The first um, one he did. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tim came before that. Okay. He did some television, then he did Tim, and then he did the Mad Max. Um, I've never seen that. Tim. Yeah, Tim, he's so young. Um, he's like a young deer or something. That's funny. Um, physically. Right. Um, he's almost uncoordinated because um, of his youth. But also because of the character he's playing. He's playing a slightly retarded young man okay. uh, in it. And um, his thighs look so large <laughs> in the film because he wears shorts all the yeah, time. Yeah, you yeah. know, like a 16-year-old looks right. you know, uh, like that. And uh, then he did the Mad Max uh, things. Gallipoli was the other, yep. you know, that came out of Australia. But that whole period, and I kind of bracketed the period from um, what? Mad Max to beyond, uh, to, well, actually... It's from Tim to Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Okay. As his young phase, and I said here, the earnest young man uh, in search of, you know, whatever okay. the subject matter of the film happens to be, but his own personality as well. And then later to on... To me, well, let mm -hmm, me stop real quick. Yes. To me, the best of that period is The Year of Living Dangerously. Oh, sure. The Absolutely. other Peter Weir movie. Yes. And it's interesting, because they so they worked together twice, and that's really, I think, other than Mad Max, that's what really broke mm -hmm. him out to the international audience, Absolutely, don't you think? yes. And that, to me, was... Yeah, I mean, I agree with you that that is his finest moment in, the, um, in that, young, that period. young period. He's so um, good in that role and, and such a good romantic yes. lead. And it's such a good film. Yeah. I mean, it mixes the politics with the romance, and right. um, it gives you a view of that aspect, that place in the world that I had never had before. And I know it came from a novel. I read the novel after I'd seen the movie. And, Did uh, it improve upon the, the, I think the so. novel? I yeah. think so. Um, particularly because of the chemistry, the sexual chemistry between him and Sigourney Weaver. I've, yeah. never, I've never thought about this before, but it's uh, it's actually interesting that they haven't reteamed Peter Weir and him just because they came yeah. up together. Mm -hmm. It'd be not kind of nice now to see, see at the yeah. tail end yeah. of their yeah. careers to to do something together. But who knows? You know, who knows what and that relationship yeah. is. But yeah. So what was next? The, the, the next, next period thing? was really um, after that was I said the desperate, what um, unstable man with a blue collar work ethic. <laughs> yes, desperate, unstable Stable. man with a blue collar work ethic. It starts with Lethal Weapon. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, that was a Mel Gibson we didn't even know existed. Yeah. At least I didn't know it existed. I mean, that crazy, wild eyed character yeah. who was, uh, you know, hell bent for letter on anything, you know, like this. And so that period. And he did me, that for a while, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Do you several. think that goes all the way through Ransom in some of um, these films? I say it goes all the way up to Science. Okay, yeah, so no. through Ransom, right. Signs, yeah. all of those films. Right, because in each of them, in one way or another, he's desperate. He's looking for something that right. um, is either out of his control or beyond his understanding. Yeah, no. Hamlet is an interesting one. I was teaching when I when he did Hamlet. I was at ASU and I was teaching. I was teaching theater, mm -hmm. and um, it's always a problem to get people to read Shakespeare. Uh, but when Gibson does it as a movie, and he was they at the watch peak it, yeah. of his popularity, yeah. then suddenly it's cool because a popular actor did it. I remember I went, I was somewhere, and I was talking about it, and um, some woman, who's the mother clearly of 
you know, uh, teenage kids, said she never thought she'd be grateful for, to Mel Gibson for getting her son to read Shakespeare. That's great. You know? But his work itself in the film, I thought was very solid. Mm -hmm. It gave me a whole different look. And again, I had never thought of a blue collar Hamlet. Right. <laughs> he actually got that. You know, he couldn't help but bring that to yeah. the work. So it was a very different Hamlet for me. Well, I, during that period, the films that stand out most to me are Ransom that I just mm -hmm. mentioned. Yes. I think that's quite an underrated movie. I think that one of Ron Howard's best. And, right. one, yes. and the Gibson performance is what carries mm -hmm. it throughout the whole thing. Yes. And even though he plays a multimillionaire in it, mm -hmm. again, the blue collar yeah. thing, oh, he doesn't seem yes. like a multimillionaire. Yes. He seems like a guy from the streets who happens to have this money. And that's a hard story to tell through a performance. And to me, he nails every part of it. He nails the desperation and then the madness to say, screw you, kidnapper. I'm going to put a bounty on your head. I believe that mm -hmm. every beat of that film, you know, when he thinks his son's dead and he breaks down, everything in there I, I love. Um, and then he also, of course, Braveheart is, mm -hmm. a, is, oh, yes. a, is a huge yes. peak of that period. I assume you're including that oh, chronologically yeah. in there. Um, and he's really good in movies during those days that, that the movies are not that good. Like uh, Conspiracy Theory mm -hmm. is a film yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. work as a, as a film, but it, him, or he, he, yeah, exactly. His performance in it, even in a movie called Air America, I don't know mm -hmm. if you ever saw that, sure. he's really entertaining yeah. in the yes. film, but the film itself yeah. falls apart completely. So I, that was a period when I was seeing every film Mel Gibson made. Yeah. So I went to see every one, uh, Miss Asafo. Yeah, right. the one that I didn't he see did that. With, yeah. yeah, with Diane Keaton. Yeah, no, because as you said, he was always interesting in the films themselves. Right. You know, he was just so solid um, when he, you know, did what he had to do, what the film required. And I um, don't know if it was conscious or just lucky, but like you said, he did transition into a whole different type of actor than mm -hmm. he was when he was doing the young roles. But it seems like his body even changed. Right. You know, because there was something very uh, uh, angular and almost knife-like yeah, about the yeah. way he looked in things like Year of Living Dangerously and Gallipoli. Yeah. And then he thickened out. Right. He thickened up, you know. But going back to Ransom, I wanted to ask, have you seen the original? I haven't. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a signal film during my with Glenn Ford, teenage, right? yeah, yeah. my teenage years. Glenn Ford made maybe five films that were social problem pictures. Mm -hmm. He did one about prejudice called Trial, okay. where he played a lawyer defending um, a Latino man who had been um, accused of murder. And he, you know, the young man, of course, didn't do it. And so Gibson, um, Gibson picking up on Ransom, I was hoping he would have done uh, the other Glenn Ford film as well. But yeah, of the that two, would be interesting. the Ron Howard's um, version is the better. You know? And the reason for that is because of the way uh, Gibson drives the performance. He drives the plot through his performance. Yeah, no, like the other that. remake or redo during that period that I think is not great but enjoyable is Maverick. Oh, yes, yes. Because he just has some fun. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes. And the Garner mm -hmm. theme it has great chemistry in it. And actually, to me, that's one of Jodie Foster's yes. best because it's not so yeah. self serious. Yeah. It's just exactly. loose. And they have a lot. She's actually sexy in the mm -hmm. film, you know? So. I really, I haven't seen that in years, but I'd like to go back and watch it. Well, and he a, fits the Western milieu. And he needs, I wish he had made I wish it, he'd done yeah. more Westerns in all of the periods right. of his career. Yes, because yes. now he'd be interesting and also in the <laughs> middle. Of the, so so what's the what's the final period? Of uh, that? If well, you're I ready think, to move on. Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. Signs. Okay. And um, that's no, a no, 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 no. So signs, you said it ended with signs. Yeah, it ends with signs. Okay, oh, cool. I, I see what you're asking. I, yeah. I misunderstood. It ends with signs. And signs is interesting for one. I mean, it's an interesting film, but it's his highest grossing film. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, no, uh, but other than obviously passion. Huh? You, oh, passion, yeah. Um, um, it must be his highest grossing film as an, an actor. Because yes, I think that's passion broke yes. all the yeah. freaking... Yeah. That's crazy that even more than Braveheart and yeah. all the yeah. other stuff that he's When done. I looked it up and it did close to half a billion dollars That's crazy. worldwide. You know? And um, I don't remember there being that much um, you know, enthusiasm over it. Right. You know? But the film did do well. And then he went into what I call now his outcast period. <laughs> you know? I like that. And That's good. Because you know, we know what the social problems are. We, know right. we don't need to, yeah. But um, he's an outcast at this point. But the roles reflected. You know? So you have something like, he starts with Edge of Darkness. And 
to the most recent one we saw together. Did you see Edge of Darkness? Yes. I didn't yeah. like what I saw of it. I did not yeah, watch I liked the his performance film. again. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and the Beaver. Right. You know? Which I haven't seen, yeah, but I've I seen want that. to. And oh, you did finally watch yes. it? Okay. Yes. And cool. the performance is solid again yeah. in it. And he's now at the point where he gives um, to me um, what I call don't care performances. Mm -hmm. you know? He's this old is, enough that yes. he's not trying no, very hard. No, he's hard, not right? trying. He just embodies the character and lets it go where it wants to go. Yeah. 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 Like that. And I like that about him. And it alienates a big section of the audience. You had a cat fight yeah. over there. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, oh just uh, to... <laughs> Talk right, about right. outcasts. Yes. One of them is yes. going to be we an outcast. Yes, we don't want outcasts. So sorry, I interrupted your train No, of what I said was that um, I forgot. <laughs> he alienates a big part of the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. I said it can be alienated oh, yeah, a big yeah. part of the audience. And as we talked about, um, because of the budget level of some of his films, mm -hmm. um, there's a kind of middle class snobbery against them. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see Get the Gringo, so I'd love oh, to have you Get talk. Get the Gringo is amazing. That's the film in the outcast period mm -hmm. to me that, that, other than Bloodfather, like mm -hmm. I would point to that as uh, as just I don't care eased into it mm -hmm. performance, and he's got this. Uh, it's just it's something he wrote mm -hmm. called uh, How I Spent My Summer Vacation, which is also a very <laughs> odd title, and then they changed the title to Get the Gringo, which I think is much better. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but it shows that, you know, I thought after seeing Payback mm -hmm. years before that he did not have a feel for the pulp um, mm -hmm. genre, the pulp crime genre. But after seeing Get the Gringo, I thought, no, I was I was wrong. It's just that he didn't understand how to do Donald Westlake, Richard mm -hmm. Stark. You know, he didn't know how to do that. But Get the Gringo is, is so just in tune with that pulp feeling just like Bloodfather is. So I wish that more people would see that. It just dropped on. It didn't get a no, theatrical. It just dropped on Netflix. No one yeah. saw it. But it's got um, you know a good ensemble cast, and, and he carries the whole thing. So that film, and then um, in this period, he started. What I was going to say is, really, uh, to me, in this period, he kind of even became more of a director mm -hmm. than an actor. That's when because because yeah, yeah, he yeah, st yeah. he stopped acting as much and transitioned a little bit more. But he said that, you know, he said at a certain point there right after um, I think it was the third Lethal, lethal Weapon that he, he really wanted to direct more and act less. Right. Yeah, he said that his feel for it. And the surprising thing is he's only directed four movies. Yeah. So the films that he directed mm -hmm. are uh, Man It Without a Face which I think is kind of the oddball mm -hmm. in his career. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about well, that. Well, it's film. his intern. Shit. Right, yeah, right. Like that, he was, he was practicing, so... Which know, is smart, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a number of directors take big, ambitious projects right, right away. But he just picked something that he figured he could handle. And that's why Braveheart is such a surprise. Braveheart is uh, just stunning. It's yes. amazing how how in control of... Mm -hmm. uh, just his second-time director that he's able to make an epic like that. And to me, he probably made the definitive film of that genre. I don't think mm -hmm. you can get mm -hmm. better yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in terms of that kind of medieval sword, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. the battle film. I think he, he perfected it right yeah, there. I, think so. I, I don't I think it gets much better than that. And then um, he it took years for him to make Passion. Passion. And nobody would fund it. Right. That's why he funded it himself. And then he made a shit ton of money on it, so it was smart to do <laughs> and so. And nobody would release it either. Right. That was the other thing. Yeah. And then, of course, the churches, yeah, you know, the it. Christian groups yeah. just... It just it yeah. yeah. And then Apocalypto, which I haven't seen. Yeah. You saw yeah, it. I saw that. Yeah. Um, and then, finally, now with Hacksaw Ridge, right. which is uh, his return. And I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you read this, but Hacksaw is not a project he developed. Meaning, I heard, yeah, I'd heard that. The script yes. kept coming to him mm -hmm. over the years, yes. Yes. and they kept approaching him with it. And finally, he said, "Okay, now's the time that, yeah. that I want to do this." You have a list of, of films that you thought. Well, I'm looking at the performances, right? Exactly. And so I listed them, you know, according to my preferences, really, mm -hmm. in a certain way. Um, Gallipoli was the first. That's when I kind of discovered him. Yeah, you know, like that. A uh, year of living dangerously is probably my favorite performance that he's given. Uh, Total, the, huh? the uh, entire yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Um, the bounty. Mm -hmm. Then I had Lethal Weapon, the first one, not the others. Right. Hamlet, Braveheart. We were soldiers, which we talked about. Yes, we, we had talked about that. Yeah, uh, we were soldiers is a, a pretty underrated and exactly, overlooked film. Exactly. Now. 
Bloodfather, which I like a lot. Oh, yeah, Bloodfather. And let's touch on that just a little okay. bit more real quick, just in the sense that I think that it really needs to be seen by audiences. And the, the critics gave it this you know, this past, they ignored it because yeah. there are a bunch of snobs, you know, and anything that sort of has a B-movie feel to it, yeah. they just overlook. And it, to me, it's 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 one of the most solid action crime films mm-hmm. that's come out in a while. I love how Gibson, to me, when the movie started, opened, and I saw Gibson's appearance, he's doing a tattoo on a woman, and he's got this beard, this white hair in his beard now he looks like you said it like years ago he looks like a truck driver (laughs) i'm like god he does look like a truck driver but he's got such a great feeling to him and this is the the final evolution or not the final who knows there might be like one more gibson that we're looking at right the real one but i like the truck driver gibson i want to i'm like always fantasizing about a movie where gibson plays a truck driver that ends up in some kind of like violent situation so He's just got such. I was almost sad in the movie when he shaves at the end. I'm like, no, yeah, you know what I mean. You got such a fantastic yeah. look. So, but you had a couple more. And then there. I had Ransom, mm. um, which we talked about. Yeah, we talked about that and Tim, mm-hmm. which is really the you know I think it's a 19 year old right. Mel Gibson or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I said he's such a big clumsy kid in that. Yes. But there's something very winning and charismatic mm-hmm. about him that kind of tells you this guy's going to have a long career right. in films and he wound up having one he's 61 this year oh wow you know, I, was, I looked up his age um and as i said you know my my reason for wanting to do a piece on gibson you know was because i want people to really pay attention take to him his seriously work. Uh, yeah. again uh he was taken seriously earlier but uh, you know i call it respect for mel gibson right you know, as an actor and as a director uh because he keeps getting dismissed hacksaw ridge is bringing back some of that, right? But um, you went on to say something about. Well, him. I just hope that that Hacksaw leads to him getting more projects funded mm-hmm. and greenlit by the studios because right. for years he's been working on some movies that sounded fascinating. This Viking movie he was going to make called The Berserker with DiCaprio mm-hmm. to me sounds just just great. You know, I want to see him descend into Viking madness. You know, he'd do his shit where he's got to have them talk in a different language, subtitles, you know. They'd have to learn Nordic or whatever. So I think that that, I'd like to see him go down his little, like, paths of interest. And hopefully the success of Hacksaw allows for him to get more projects funded. He also has this new movie that he's producing with... Uh, with Sean Penn called The Professor and the Madman. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it, it should be called The Madman and the Madman because uh, <laughs> because it's two, two of Hollywood's greatest crazies, uh-huh. right, getting together, right, and hopefully hopefully there's some fireworks on screen. So but you had an insight that I thought was appropriate and accurate about even if he gets reaccepted again into right. the mainstream. And let's see. He's, well, I think that you say his final phase is an outcast. Yes. And to me, that's his truest face. He, uh-huh. he, he is an outcast, right? That's, that's his instinct, right? So no matter how accepted he is, he's going to do something at some point that throws him off those tracks. And personally, though I want him to be accepted too, like I want people to take him seriously, I'm going to clap and be happy the day that he throws himself <laughs> back off the tracks because that's what I like about Gibson. He's unpredictable. He's going to do something that you're like, fuck, what did he do now? Holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, he's, you know. The wild he, man. Yeah, exactly. He is a wild man, right? And that's what I like the wild men of cinema. You know, the Herzogs and the Gibsons. They're different. The Kinskys and all of the, you know, they keep things interesting. So. Um, I look forward to the news when the news hits that Gibson is once again like thrown yes. himself For into outer, <laughs> yeah, outer <laughs> darkness and, and has to return from there. So, um, but yeah, I think you're totally right. He's a fascinating character, and I know even just this conversation has made me want to explore some of his films again that I haven't seen in a while, like The Bounty. And I never caught up with the beaver and Apocalypto. So hopefully, it, you know, if anyone is listening to this, that it helps, you know, encourages you to take him seriously, look at Bloodfather, look at Get the Gringo, mm-hmm. and, and see some of his films. And I know where he's our inspiration. Because we yeah. want to always be outside of the box, and we always want to be outcasts. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
So to Mel Gibson, we support you. Right? And if you had a drink, I would. Yes, toast to Mel you. Gibson. <laughs> to Mel Gibson. Yes. So next time we're going to talk about critics. Okay. I think so, right? All right, if you want to. Yes. We will. Well, that was your idea. If was I it my idea? Yes, okay. exactly. <laughs> I forgot. All okay. right. Next time we'll be back to talk yes. about those critics. All talk right. to you soon.